So first we'll try to understand what is the real application uh, cluster, different uh, parts, what are the needs for a real application cluster. So we'll try to understand different things like real, what is real application clustering, why it is required, and then we'll go with uh, architecture and then hardware requirement for uh, any rack database environment. And then uh, again, this hardware parts, what are the different components, network components, then storage components. So all those things we are going to, and lastly, we'll be comparing the single instance and rack environments, okay? So let us start with understanding why we require the real application cluster. So there are basically two things that we need to focus. So basically it has, um, so suppose if you have any application, which is basically running uh, with load of like, uh, uh, suppose it is running with 50 uh, active connection every day okay and suddenly uh, due to business growth or maybe due to some region uh, the database connections are increased from 50 to 100 right so in that case what happens your existing database will not be able to process maybe there is some limitation for any hardware right so in this case what will happen uh, you need to scale the data uh, scale the database server so in order to process a uh, large number of uh, uh, connections or the large number of the processes uh, or the transaction, you need to increase your uh, database server. So what we can do, we can uh, add another server, like if you have single single uh, instance database server, what you will do, you'll add another uh, server into the existing environment and you might use it for scalability purposes. Okay. That's the one region. And apart from that, high availability is also one of the factor that uh, makes the real application cluster very important. So suppose you have one, uh, two nodes, a uh, single node is running and uh, due to some regions, like uh, uh, there is some memory issue on your server and uh, your database is basically got down due to memory issue. So, I mean, this is basically a business loss, right? To avoid that, what you, uh, you can do, you should have, I mean, uh, you will consider to take another server along with your existing server. So in case of any failure on one of the nodes, what you can do at least you can switch to another node, right? That That is basically high availability. So whenever we talk about, uh, I mean, in terms of database requirements, we should always consider these factors because nowadays 24 into seven, I mean, I mean for any application or any, uh, I mean, any business it is required. So in order to, I mean, um make it work smoothly we should have we should consider high availability as well as a scalability so these are the two main factors that makes a real application important okay so moving ahead with the rack architecture so i'm not going to cover up like uh, what are the different uh, uh, components like uh, if you have seen the single instance like it has sga pga and within the sga we have the database buffer cache so those things, I, I, I mean, in the single instance, you might be already familiar. So what I'm going to, uh, I mean, how the rack environment looks like. So we'll try to understand that. So, so in case of single instance, you will be having only one node. But in case of real application, you, you might be having the multiple nodes, like one or uh, two nodes, or maybe a three nodes, or even the four or eight nodes are also possible. So I have seen like four, four node rack cluster, uh, rack database environment. So basically the idea here is uh, you will be having the servers with the uh, instances. So whenever we talk about rack environment, so it, it, it comes with instances. That means memory plus processes. So every server is having its own memory and processes. Okay. And, but the database, uh, the data file will remain the same on the common storage. Okay and the application user can connect to any one of the nodes and they will process these queries and uh, they can fetch the data from the shared storage okay so this is how our rack in architecture looks like and uh, within this i mean there is intercommunication happen between the nodes node one can transfer the data from its memory to node two and even the node two can transfer to vice versa uh, and even the node three can transfer from uh, two or three or like that. Okay, so that is basically called the cache fusion. Cache fusion means the memory part, which is uh, the uh, you can say the data block, which is in the memory of one of the nodes that can be basically transferred across the nodes. Any question? I think uh, some background noise. Okay. 
fine so basically this is the basic idea about our uh, rack environment like uh, uh, any rack database basically uh, it is like share everything architecture that means the data which is there, there in the node one that can be shared across node two and node three like that and even though rack cluster multiple servers uh, that then it operate as a single so uh, for the end user it is never like we, I, i'm connecting with node one or node two so they will be given only a scan uh, scan details so what is the scan and those things i am going to explain later so a scan is nothing but uh, connectivity uh, yeah so a scan is basically a connect connection string that we use for connecting to the database server okay <clears throat> so for end user it is like single connection connectivity uh, connection string they, they will be getting that information and they might be connecting to either node 1 or node 2 or node 3 it, it totally depend upon the load balancer which is acting between them okay so a database instance uh, consists of collection of oracle related memory plus background processes and uh, unlike the single node database which is limited to one uh, instance per so basically in in case of single we have only one uh, instance in this we have the multiple instances they are connected to the database okay so all the instances of the database can uh, shares the concurrent access to the database file so they are concurrently accessing these data files okay and the communication between the node 1 node 2 and node 3 the inter inter communication between them are basically handled by the cluster interconnect so it is nothing but a high bandwidth uh, network that is uh, active between all these nodes uh, so the data from node 1 can be transferred to node 2 even though node 3 like that okay So what are the hardware requirements for any rack environments? So the first thing, I mean, uh, basically for any typical rack database, it requires at least two or more servers. So suppose if you have the two nodes, you'll require two, or if you have many uh, nodes, I mean, three nodes or four nodes, so you'll require uh, that amount of, uh, that number of servers, okay? And also it, it requires the network for accessing uh, I mean, for the connectivity across the multiple nodes and will require the shared storage. So again, uh, so there is one one question that comes into the picture, like uh, uh, if we have the two separate servers, like one server is using uh, Linux, one is using uh, Windows server. So can we use them? So the answer is no, we cannot use in, in case of RAC. So it, it has to be on the same operating system. And even though OS, uh, all the os related configuration should be matching okay so whenever we are configuring rack environment we should have the similar kind of uh, uh, servers for rack configuration okay and uh, also we should have the same amount of cpu as well as the memory and physical network so these things we have to always keep in mind whenever we are configuring any rack environment okay yeah so one more thing uh, whenever we are going to configure rack we will require at least a uh, space for operating system along with uh, we require for record grid infrastructure software home as well as rdbms so basically uh, i mean uh, we'll require the two separate locations where we can uh, configure on one location we need to configure the grid infrastructure and uh, on another location we'll require to configure the rdbms software that is nothing but our database software okay so we are going to look how this things works uh, just wait for a few minutes more so this is something like uh, actually in a real uh, scenario if you look how the rack environment looks like so suppose this these are the application uh, users who are connected from the lan or the van and uh, these are the uh, actual server which is nothing but rack nodes okay and they will be uh, connected with uh, several uh, storage switches and this is our actual uh, SAN storage that is shared across multiple servers and uh, node server one two three they will be connected through the private network switches so that they can communicate across all the nodes okay so whenever we are uh, going to uh, uh, perform any rack configuration uh, we should always follow this uh, standard oracle documentation which provides the um, ora check configuration related information how to I mean, verify whether your environment is 
sufficient or i mean uh, whether your environment is ready for rack configuration or not so that those things we can verify from this or uh, oracle documentation okay then next part comes like uh, uh, this is basically actual understanding diagram that we need we need to understand uh, whenever we are dealing with rack environment so suppose you have any operating system these are two separate nodes that we are going to use for configuring the rack environment suppose you have the operating system so on top of that we are going to configure the grid infrastructure like this so it has the asm as well as a clusterware so grid infrastructure is nothing but asm plus clusterware and uh, on top of that we will have the rack database instance okay so this is database software and apart from that it has the listener listener is basically its uh, job is to listen the user uh, connection request and it, it 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 has to pass on to the database okay and this node will be communicating through the private intercommunication channel and also uh, they are shared across i mean they are using a shared storage in the where my data files or uh, you, you can say the configuration files that is nothing but oracle uh, cluster registry this is called ocr file and voting disk is nothing but a uh, uh, file which is used for uh, verifying the nodes uh, alive okay so whether this node is alive or not so those things will basically uh, verify through the voting disk so these are the two very important components we will be looking at uh, more detail about this uh, so they should be residing on the shared storage ocr file as well as a voting disk okay and again on top of that we will be having the services for every instance we can configure multiple services services nothing but a database uh, uh, service so it is basically used for like uh, there are few application which is related to maybe a financial or maybe a, uh, some uh, transactional related uh, uh, database request so we can basically create uh, multiple services and based upon those services uh, we can i mean uh, segregate the uh, database request so services basically will be running on all these nodes and the vip is basically used uh, for like uh, load balancing or you can say whenever there is an issue happens on a specific node so the, the user request can be automatically switched to the another nodes okay so suppose uh, there are already few thousands of users already connected on this instance and due to some reason it got failed or crashed so the new application uh, request for, which is coming on this node they should be knowing that this node is crashed okay so it will automatically switch to the next available vip ips okay so it will uh, transfer those requests to the next available nodes so it will not wait for the timeout to happen this is the main idea behind the vips okay and this is very important the single client access name so whenever we are dealing with a rack environment we should be knowing that scan is very uh, significant so it has basically so what happens in previous cases like uh, 11g and 10g version of the database so whenever an app end application user has to connect on to the database server so they should have the information about both the nodes like node 1 node 2 or maybe node 3 whatever the number of nodes were there so they should be knowing the ip addresses as well as the virtual ips of those servers in order to connect to the database okay so the connection is string if you see uh, the tns names dot ora file which is used for connecting to the database so those uh, files are very big in uh, i mean um, uh, size as well as the management of those connection strings are very difficult so what oracle has uh, done they have created this single access client uh, single client access name uh, mechanism so what it does it it is basically creating uh, three separate scan listeners which will be running along with the local listener on the nodes okay so for entire rack environment you will be finding three uh, separate scan listeners okay so scan listener basically what it does it it is just a load balancing uh, uh, kind of mechanism that that we are using so whenever application user will send the request they will land into the scan ips okay so scan ip basically it will verify which is which node is basically uh, list loaded and based upon that it will transfer those requests to the specific node like either node 1 or maybe node 2 like that okay so scan is very significant whenever we are dealing with rack i hope in this point is clear any question so far hello 
Uh, no questions from me. Okay, fine. None. All right. So basically, uh, this is the architecture that we are going to follow uh, while configuring the rack environment also, and. Uh, so so basically we will be requiring two separate private ips like one for node one and one for node two and similarly we will be requiring vips for one for uh, node one one for node two and even though one local ips is also required like which is called the public ip for this particular node as well as this node so total we will be requiring six different ips for the entire configuration along with that we will require the three separate ips for the uh, scan so scan is basically three different scan which is getting created so it will require three um, ip addresses for configuring the scan and uh, we will require the shared storage so everything we are going to configure on the virtual box so we will create two separate uh, servers or you can say two separate uh, virtual box machines and then we will be doing the all this configuration okay <clears throat> So moving further, we'll look into what are the different networks and what are the uses of it. So uh, we have already seen like uh, what is the private interconnect, uh, private IP. So this is basically uh, um, used for uh, transferring the data between the nodes. And the public IP is basically it's uh, like um, local IP that is used for uh, uh, I mean connecting to the specific node. So suppose we have two separate nodes. So each node will have its own IPs, right? So that is nothing but a public IP. And the VIP is again used for uh, performing the like failover uh, uh, issues. So whenever the uh, node is getting down due to some issues, so automatically it will fail over the incoming connection or the request to the next available servers and it will avoid any kind of like timeout issues so normally if the if we look at the timeout issue so it, it takes around uh, like uh, maybe 180 minutes almost three uh sorry 180 seconds that is uh, almost for three minutes so end user has to wait for that much uh, period of time okay so to avoid those situation we can use the vips okay and then the next part is cluster networking that is the scan Again, I told you what is the significance of it. So basically, it it requires the three three separate IPs to configure the scan, and uh, this is to handle the uh, application con connection, and it will basically automatically load balance the uh, application uh, user's request. So the least lo loaded node will get the connection from, like uh, either it will land to node one or node two, depend upon the yeah so one important part uh, here is like uh, uh, we have to so normally what happens in any organization level when we talk about all these network ips so they they will configure the dns server and within the, those dns it will automatically resolve these ips okay but in our case what we are going to do we are going to use the uh, etc host file so it is totally based upon the host file configuration so we will not be using any dns base okay so normally these IP has to be resolved by the DNS, but in our case, uh, those uh, DNS will not be available. Okay, and uh, there is some advanced uh, concept like GNS. Again, that is uh, something which is related to network that, that I'm not going to cover. Okay, so at organi organization level, so whenever you will be getting any request for configuring the rack, you will be requesting to the network, I, like I'll require the three scan IPs which should be resolved from the dns okay and apart from that you will be requesting them for two private interface one uh, on each node and apart from that you will be requesting two public ips okay okay so totally we will be requiring this uh, two public two private three scan ips and two vips like total uh, six plus nine total nine ips you will be required okay so again scan will have uh, scan name scan ip as well as a scan listener so uh, while configuring the rack environment we need to provide the scan name okay so the based upon the ip that we are going to use from here we will be defining the scan name so while configuring this rack environment i'll show how these things are basically works okay so after this we'll be having the shared uh, storage component so storage component basically either we can use asm based configuration or 
OCFS or the vendor supplied cluster file system or the raw, raw, raw device also we can use but uh, the basically the most preferred uh, shared storage is based upon the ASM based so even if you have seen any rack environment so most likely you might be come across the word ASM okay ASM is nothing but automatically uh, uh, storage management part okay so it is used for uh, handling the multiple shared uh, uh, shared disk okay so what you can do you can um, create uh, like a asm disk groups that can be used for uh, storing the data files or you can say uh, for storing the data file mostly we'll use and even though archive logs and all those things we can keep on the uh, asm based storage okay and uh, what all the things we can uh, i mean keep on the shared storage this is nothing but data files control file online data log files so these things we can keep in the shared storage and apart from that we have the two separate uh, on this one ocr and voting disk so ocr is nothing but a configuration file so when we uh, when we are dealing with rack environment so uh, like any database instance database name instance or the services so those information basically kept inside inside the ocr file OCR file will basically residing on the shared storage so that it can be uh, accessed across all the nodes. Okay, this is the significance of OCR file. So all the configuration related information, th those things will be uh, kept in the OCR file. And next part is voting disk. So voting disk is nothing but the file that is used to inf uh, store the information about the node membership. So whenever the uh, particular node gets added into the entire clusterware, so whenever we are, we are talking about clusterware, that is nothing but a, a grid infrastructure that we have. Like uh, multiple nodes are connected with each other, and that is makes a, a single cluster, right? So <clears throat> within a clusterware, there will be possibility of uh, nodes which is getting added or maybe getting removed. So sometimes we suppose we have the two nodes and we are just uh, stopping one of the nodes due to some activity or maybe uh, due to some planned activity okay so uh, during that time what will happens like uh, th that particular node is getting uh, i mean removed from the uh, entire cluster right so uh, those information basically it, it is hold holded by the voting disk that means it has the information which all the nodes are or member of this cluster so voting disk has th that information like uh, what all uh, what are the different nodes which are the part of this or the member of this cluster okay so now a uh, quick comparison between single instance and rack environment so whenever we uh, talk about um, single instance environment so basically it's like a, uh, uh, it, it is having only a uh, instance specific uh, SGA that means the uh, system global area the memory component of uh, single instance database it is up to the uh, one node but here in case of a rack environment we will be having multiple instances right so it, each instance will have its own SGA okay and again the same thing for the background process also so for single instance we will be having a uh, Oh, it's on background process but in case of rack environment we will be having the multiple uh, set of processes uh, which is uh, specific to the instance and the data file so this is again uh, it is specific to only one instance but it is uh, shared across all the instances so it is having only one data file but it is shared okay and same case with a control file also but in case of uh, single instance this is specific to one instance okay and next part is online read to log file. So online read to log file is basically a dedicated for writing or reading to only one instance. And but in case of rack environment, what happens? The online read to log file will be basically specific to um, node only, but the other instance can read it from the whenever it is required. Okay, so only one instance can write, but other instances can read during the time of recovery or archiving. This is the logic behind it. So suppose we have the two nodes. So node one will have its own uh, online read log files, and uh, but the writing part can be done by only node one, and reading can be done across all the nodes, uh, which is either required for recovery or maybe archiving purpose. Okay. So whenever the log switch uh, happens by other instances, can force the idle instance to um, instance read to get archived. So this is the case of archiving. 
and the same thing for the archived uh, redo also this is dedicated to instance one and in this case it is private to the instance but other instances uh, can read the archive logs so you guys are already familiar with uh, archive redo log and online log even the control file right this is my consideration if you have any queries you can just ask and then we have flash flash recovery log also so flash recovery log basically uh, if we have kept our database in flashback mode that means uh, we we want to roll back my uh, database i mean uh, if you are interested to roll back or flashback the database to a previous uh, uh, restore point so that feature basically uh, comes with flashback recovery logs so those logs file are basically in case of single instance specific to the node but in case of rack environment that is totally uh, uh, i mean it is shared across all the instances this is a same thing and even it has to reside on the shared storage next part is alert log so alert log is basically dedicated for single instance it is dedicated to the instance and but in case of uh, uh, rack environment this is private to each instance so every instance will have its own uh, like uh, alert log or even the trace files everything okay and uh, next part is oracle form so suppose you if you have a single instance so basically you can have the multiple database uh, running on the same server which is a single instance environment so that is possible and in case of rack environment you will be having a single instance and uh, basically this this has to be on local to the uh, node so, so so suppose in the rack environment you have multiple nodes so each node will have its own uh, oracle home and even though you can keep it kept it on the shared storage but it is not ad ad advisable because if the shared storage is gone then your oracle home will be gone okay so your entire cluster where or entire rack environment is down so it has to be on local to the environment okay so this is a comparison between single instance and rack environment so with this we can i mean uh, we can proceed with uh, like configuration part so at least uh, we have understood what is the rack environment and uh, how it is different from the single instance